So we've had a delivery and we've got ourselves a bolt-on steering kit for Peter's tractor. It's from a, a company called Svea Verken. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Svea Verken they're called. Um, it's a brand new kit actually. They've only just released it. Uh, me and Pete have had a little snoop inside, but we're going to show you what, basically, we're going to show you how to put one of these kits on your tractor and we're going to show you how to use it because a lot of people out there don't have steering kits for no. their tractors and a lot of people don't even realise you can add these things to your tractor. You know, older tractors that don't have steering kits. We're going to put it on Peter's 7716, aren't we, Pete? Yep. Pete's gonna be, Pete's gonna do the main of the uh, installing and our filming basically. Should we have a little look inside then, Pete? What have we got? Should we go? What we? Which one should we do, do this first? box first? Yeah. So this box is predominantly brackets to fix the steering wheel motor on. I think so. You get a selection of bosses with different size splines in the end to fit different manufacturers' steering columns. So they're all they've all got a different sized spline hole in them. Oh, you get plenty to choose from then, Pete. And you pick the one that fits your tractor. Sweet. So we've got to figure out which one fits ours. Yeah, and then that bolts into the centre of the steering wheel in those bolt holes there. Right. And then what else have we got in here? Uh, these brackets. Again, various ones for various tractors are to hold the electric motor from spinning. Instead of spinning the motor, it wants to spin the steering wheel. So right. these are all various brackets for doing that job, I think. Okay. Again, the wide, Lovely. So wide selection. A, okay, yeah. So we've got to sort of figure out which one's best for our tractor. Yeah, because some, some clamp around the steering column and other ones like that, I think, clamp and, and just sit against the plastic work underneath the steering wheel. Right. We'll see when we get going. I'm yep. We haven't tried anything. Right. And in the other box, what do we get? Now, one of the things they say, Peter, is that this system can be uh, put on in half an hour. What do you say to that? I think you'd have to work extremely fast <laughs> in half an hour. But we'll, we'll see. We'll we set. are we are going to time we it. No, we haven't tried it. So. We don't expect it to take 30 minutes. We expect it to take a little bit longer. And because we're filming as well, it's going to take a little bit longer anyway. So. There's your dome, which I think bolts onto that, right? Which in turn is bolted onto the roof of your cab. Yep. I'll put that way so it don't get damaged. Yes. Various wiring harnesses for the screen and the steering wheel and the aerial. Yep. What's this? Uh, that's an angle sensor, which yep. got to go on the front axle somewhere. Right. Steering wheel motor. Yeah, heavier than it looks, isn't it? It is very heavy. And Does those, it feel high quality? Yeah, it feels nice. Those uh, bosses that I just showed you, they bolt into the centre there. Yep. And then we've got a screen there, obviously, where it all... Touch screen. Well, that operators. looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah. That looks, yeah. That looks lovely. And again, more wiring harnesses. That looks just as nice as Keithy's screen, in it, doesn't it? Yeah, it feels good quality. It doesn't feel cheap. It's nasty. No. It looks nice, doesn't it? And this is just some brackets to mount that in the cab. Yep. All right, there we go. That's what you get in the box then. Now me and Pete have got to figure out this jigsaw puzzle. We have had a, a little look online. There are some online instructions. Uh, they are brief, but they sort of give you an idea of where everything goes, don't they, Pete? Yeah, rough. What we're going to do, we're going to figure everything out before we do it, we'll, and, then, and we'll show you how we go along. They sell this uh, kit as a uh, interchangeable, so you can put it from tractor to tractor, don't they? Yeah. Uh, that's the selling point of it. You, like we could swap it from Peter's to mine. We are just going to set it up in Peter's tractor. We're going to hide the wires as best we can. It's just going to stay in there, it's isn't it? Be a because Peter's permanent. tractor, yeah. he, his tractor is the drilling tractor, so uh, that's the main use for it. Uh, Linda is setting up the RTK side of it, and we'll show you. We'll tell you all about that as uh, as we learn that as well. We haven't done RTK before. Uh, apparently it's cellular. The kit has terrain compensation, Pete? I think it does, yeah. Yes, I'm pretty sure it does. Supposedly accurate to two and a half centimetres, isn't it? Yes, via RTK. We're not like specialists in, in this sort of thing, are we? We know, how they we know how to use them. We've got a few different systems here at the farm, haven't we? We've yeah. got inbuilt systems, we've got older systems, and we've got bolt-on systems. Yeah. 
So it it's, it's only running wires basically. Yeah. All the components are just got to be bolted in place and attached by wires, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Our one was a uh, what number six? You said number six. That's the center, isn't it? And that just gets bolted in the middle. It, it just drops down through the centre. Do it up with a string of bolts, and it's just that splined and that centre. Fits our steering. That fits our steering wheel. Yeah. This is the tractor in question that it's going to go on. This is our 7716 Massey Ferguson. This is the one we're going to be bolting it to. Peter's put the centre of the uh, boss in the uh, centre of the thing, so the steering wheel's going to come off, and then we're going to figure out the bracket that. Um, that fixes it to the column there. First job was to put the steering wheel on. So what Peter did was he had to find the right insert for the steering wheel. Ours was a number six. So you just literally Allen key those on and then the steering wheel then goes on and gets bolted to here. And then there's a special bracket. We've got to come around the other way. Our one was this bracket here. And Peter just put some of these, um, he, he cut a bit of pipe in half just to make sure that there's, uh, you know, it's all pressed against there nice and there's no squeaking. Uh, that's what we've added on there. But um, yeah, that just gets bolted up underneath. Those were a little bit fiddly to get an Allen key on there. We had to cut an Allen key down uh, to fit it in there. So that was the only problem there. Uh, that's all on there nice and it's all on there tight now. So what are we moving on to next then, Pete? Uh, put the uh, wiring harness for that steering motor in next. Yeah. And we're going to try and hide everything, aren't we? As best we can. If we can, yeah. Yeah, so it's going to take us a little bit longer because we're not putting in there temporary like you could with other tractors. So it... I mean, it can't be just plugged in and laid and tagged, yes. tagged to stuff, but we're hoping to run, the, run it down the steering column and out of sight. Yeah. You can have it in there, so you can pull it out and put it on another tractor if you wanted to. But it's going to stay on this tractor, so Pete's going to hide all the wires as nice as he can. We don't want wires hanging around because it looks untidy, so Pete's going to do a nice job with that. Right, because we're going for a bit more of a, uh, a semi-permanent effort, Pete, is, we're going to get some special clips to uh, clip it down here. But every tractor is going to be different, so your setup's going to be a slightly different to ours if you haven't got a Massey. But Pete is actually going to try and hide the wiring down in the console and uh, so it's all hidden out the way and it looks really nice then. Good position. That looks nice, yeah. We've just put the screen in, which is pretty simple. Just bolts around the back here. Four bolts onto the uh, handle of the door. That's where we've gone for on ours and uh, it's, it's all aluminium as well. It's nice, isn't it, Pete? It, it goes round, on round mounts. They go on quite nice, yeah, don't they? Yeah, it is. You can tilt it and turn it and wherever you want it. We, we've put that on there just so we can, when we mock the wiring up, we know exactly how much slack to have and all the rest of it. So next job, what, would, what are we going to do? We're going to mount the dome next, Pete, or? Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if, work out where the wiring harness is going to go first, I think, because there's a bit more tuck in behind the dashboard to do. Yeah, Pete's got it running through the dashboard here so it's nice and tidy out the way. We might just drag everything down and run it under the floor out the way yeah, Pete. I think so. It's a bit more of a permanent fix. It'll take a little bit longer to install but it'll look really smart afterwards. A bit more? Yeah, what, what harness have you got there? You got the cable for the dome. That's the cable for the dome yeah. and that's the uh, magnetic aerial. And that'll, that'll just sit on top of the roof, will it? Yeah. And that's gone right into the cab, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, nice. So we're yeah. going to be able to hold the wires. I'll bring it out through that seal there. Yeah. And onto the lid there. On top, big man's cracker bar now. Okay. One of the things we were just talking about is whether this little sensor is waterproof or not but we're sort of thinking it has to be don't we Pete because it's in the place where it's gonna you know it's gonna rain here in England uh, that's a that's for certain yeah and the tractor gets washed and yeah tractor gets washed it is it, we're just um, I'm sure it must be we, you know it's, it's right in where the grime and the dirt is so it must um, it must be waterproof we would have thought for the angle sensor we tried to make a bit of a permanent fixture for it, so what we've done is 
gone bolted onto these two bolts here. Got it running down the track rod, and then we've got it running down these hydraulic pipes. And then it comes up behind everything. And then the only other way is to bring it up through the door. And then we're going to try and sort out some sort of, uh, we're going to put everything together and hide the wires there somehow. Um, the one thing we would we'd like to have seen that just a foot longer, wouldn't we, Pete? Yeah, just it's for a, a bit marginal bit. on length, but because uh, we have to leave spare to allow the axle to oscillate without stretching the wires. And, yeah. And when the wheel's on full lock, that way it, it's it needs extra as well. That's what this slack is hanging down here, just to allow yeah. it to steer. Uh, I suppose all tractors are different, so it's, yeah. it's going to be different on every tractor. But you sort of just got to work your way around it. Still got the dome to put on. Uh, we're going to have to do some mounting for that. Peter's ran the uh, the wires for that all up through the cab at the top there, so that's going to look pretty nice. 44 inches. Forty-four is about right, yeah. 22. Twenty-two. What we've learnt from stuff in the past is the further forward the dome, it's a little bit better in the way the tractor works so we're going to get this as forward as we can and uh, we may have to end up with a bracket that pokes it out the front it's why you see john deere's with the domes right poking over the cap but uh, we're going to try and mount this as further forward as we can we've got to make some brackets what we could do we just have to extend two feet out exactly and bolt it on further forward yeah but we'll see it might be fine like it is it'll look tidier like that won't it well, they do come to mount this to your roof they do come with these plates that uh, that sit underneath your cab and poke through and then you bolt the uh, mounting plate for the dome down to it but we're not going to use those we're just going to we've got a metal cab roof so we're just going to drill through the cab roof we're going to put some o-rings in there to stop the water getting in we'll put some washers in there and it'll be more than strong enough won't it peter Yes, because like I said, I think they are just when you've got a plastic roof that's not quite as strong. You put those on the inside so the bolts stick through and then bolt it on. It's much more rigid there. Yeah, because it pushes it back as well from where we want to mount it as well, doesn't it? We have mounted the dome to the top plate of the tractor. Should have probably bolted the uh, dome to the bracket first. So if you're doing this for the first time, bolt the dome to the bracket and the wiring harness first and take it all up in one go. Uh, we've already ran the wires through the tractor now. So we're, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make it work. We're just gonna, we've got the wires up there. You see, we're just gonna plug them in uh, when Peter's up there. We've just bolted this steel lid back down. It just covers the air conditioning system, basically. It's bolted down all the way around there. This is a magnetic aerial. You want to screw this onto it. And your dome's on there. Is there a wire in that dome as well, Pete? The wires there? come out the dome, go underneath this lip. There's a rubber seal under there, so it won't cut the wire. And that goes through the cab and hidden away, doesn't Down it? Down a B post. You've got to make sure you've got these little dots uh, pointing forwards, haven't you? These dots got to be pointing forwards. Yeah, do the little grub screw up with the Allen key. Yeah. Stop it coming under. Yeah. And that's it, that's it. It's all bolted on there, ready to go, yeah? Yeah, it should be. These two ends, you connect to your battery, which Peter's going to do next. And there's a switch. This goes, this gets bolted up to the column somewhere or anywhere in the cab, anywhere you want it. Uh, I don't know where Peter's going to put that yet, but uh, that gets all bolted up. And then it gets connected to the main harness, which goes to the screen. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Then you start her up and see what she does. Got a main wiring harness for our tractor already um, within the tractor. So ours is gonna go on there, but these two, these two would go on your battery and you thread the wires, uh, usually a hole in the floor or a grommet in the floor that you can get your wires out to the battery for. But uh, we've already got a special connection in our tractor that we're gonna use for these and keep all the wiring in there under the floor, hidden away and it should look a nice job. And this, this comes from the battery. There's a number four on there. You plug it into number four on there. So the power goes into the main harness, yeah? Yeah. Number three. Number three. And what does that go to? 
That comes that up, goes up to the dome on the roof because it's going up that <laughs> V pillar. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What we got to do now? Find a, a suitable place for that. Yeah. Well, Peter is just putting all the wires into some neat order. We've done some uh, calculations in the book here. You've got to do some uh, different calculations. Just uh, sort of go through one with it. They want to just different things. They want to know the wheelbase of the front axle. They want to know the height of the receiver, how far it is from the front axle to the rear axle, st stuff like that. So me and Pete have gone through that already, written all the values down. We'll enter it into the computer. We have got RTK being set up as we speak. I'll put a link in the description of where we got ours. I think they are different, they're area based. So you might have to uh, do a little bit of research on there. It's NTRIP RTK and it should be network coverage. So uh, they're going to send us a SIM card that we put into the monitor and then you will get a login and a host name that they will give you you enter all that in and then you should have network coverage of rtk signals and that will give you accuracy up to two and a half centimeters in the field so it should be really nice beautiful straight lines and uh, very very accurate as well got all installed all nice pete's done a lovely job with the wiring we'll show you all around it and the screen's up and running now so that's the steering wheel, this is the motor, this is the wire that connects to it. We've got it run through the dash, it comes out the back and then up behind the monitor there. The one thing we could have done with is the angle sensor, angle sensor. We could have done with a longer lead for that, it just reaches, uh, but we would like to have made a tidier job with the wiring for that. But uh, it reaches and it does the job. So there's the screen, it's a lovely screen. We have just been having a little bit of trouble we couldn't get our motor to ping up green on here we can't do anything until our RTK subscription card comes so you have to order yourself either a base station to go with this or you have to order the uh, RTK subscription which comes with a card which goes in the side of the monitor here the monitor is lovely and bright really nice it's high definition, it all looks really lovely. Once we get our card come through, we'll install that, then we'll go and try it out in the field. It won't let us do any calibrations until we've got that card. Sorted out our, we had a motor issue. So if you have got some problems, go to the treble section, it'll tell you where your problem is. And basically this was coming up red. So what we did is we, uh, we pulled all the wiring apart, make sure all the connections were good. And the one connection that wasn't plugged plugged in well enough was the one in the back of the screen so we ended up undoing everything and uh, just making sure the plugs and then we ended back at the screen and it was the one at the back of the screen which wasn't quite plugged in so got that sorted everything works nice the domes on top Peter's done a nice job with that there's the dome we're uh, really excited to use it so as soon as the uh, card comes we'll use it and um, We'll show you it all going. The uh, the toggle for the gears, a little bit further away because the motor's a bit thicker. Obviously you've got your uh, your buttons for the screen in there. You can still get to them, but they're just under there. So, And it wasn't a big job to install. It's, it has taken us all day because we wanted a more permanent fixture for it. We've run wires around everywhere, but uh, in the end, it's gonna be a real nice system. Pete's gonna use this. He's gonna use this on a lot of different things. He's gonna use it drilling. Uh, I imagine there'll be some mole ploughing, there'll be some uh, cultivation work going on. Um, it, it, you can use it on anything. You use it on the flat rolls, you use it on the harrows, you use it, you, you can use it on anything. Uh, so the next video, we're going to go out in the field, we're going to do some calibrations, and then we're going to try it. We're going to try it on something, we'll get the topper on or something, and we'll go and do some fields. And then once uh, drilling comes around, you'll get to see some uh, drilling with it. There we go. And the, the switch beat are set up, he set it up down here nice. Sveavirken is how you pronounce it. It's the F100 steering kit and it seems nice. It seems a high quality product. The screen is nice and responsive. I just want to use it now so uh, yeah we'll catch you on the next one. I hope you like that one.